Hey there, welcome back to our channel. This is Eva here. Uh, today on our quick tip tutorials, I'm going to take us through a little command uh, on Rhino called the shell polysurface command. It's a command that entered Rhino between versions 5 and 6. Sneaky, not really very noticeable at first, but invaluable for what it does. And uh, it's very, very simple to use. So let's get started. As you can see, I've built a couple of primitives and chopped and spliced them. And uh, let's get right into the solid tools. You'll see the shell polysurface in the second row and um, let's select that in the in the command line you have a choice of what thickness you can use um, I'll just leave it at one for the moment and we'll select one face on our cube and there you go let's put it in ghosted here you can see now how it's shelled that cube but with a one millimeter thickness all around. So let's try the second cube but this time what we're going to do is we're only going to select top and bottom face of our cube. Let's change thickness this time. And hit enter and there you go. So as you can see, depending on what face you choose on your object, it will connect and try to hollow it out using that as your information. So this time around, we will take three faces and that's our result. So let's see what happens when we use it on the cylinder. This time we do the same thing, just one polysurface, top. And let's check it out in ghosted view again. You can see the thickness is 3 millimeter all around. We do the same as we did with the cube and we choose both the top and the bottom of our cylinder. You can probably guess by now that choosing the sides of your cylinder won't work and we'll see why on the sphere we go with half a cylinder you can check how this is coming in very handy so what happens when we get to a sphere well you have no flat surfaces and connected surfaces on a sphere a sphere, a sphere is made of one surface only so if we wanted to hollow out a sphere what we'd have to do is cut away one side so that you turn it into a polysurface. So in this case, what I did was use the cut plane, take off the bottom, and I would use that surface as my entry surface for the shell polysurface command. Here we have two spheres after that. The one, it has surfaces joined that are cut away and another has a little surface in between that's been left there so when we perform the shell surface on either one we're going to see a distinct difference uh, where there's still a little bit of of the sphere original sphere surface joining uh, bridging through you will see it will do almost an offset surface towards the inside uh, whereas with the other one we will have a nice open space there where the bridge is. And the last one is the torus. And the torus works a lot like the sphere, as it's also just one surface. So on a, a torus, a primitive, you will not be able to do the shell command. But if you had to cut a torus in half uh, one way or the other or use a cut plane to splice a piece away like uh, we did with the sphere on, on, on the previous uh, object you would be able to perform the shell and 
that was it for today. Uh, hope this helped. Have a cool day.